Hey everyone, Brent the Middleman, your middle age, middle manager in middle America, here today with a great new show recommendation and breakdown for Prime Video's supernatural mystery show, The Rig. As always, I will start off with a spoiler-free review for those of you who haven't seen it, and then I'll let you know when I get into the spoiler-filled ending explained part, and you can come back and watch it later. If you want to support the channel and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subs, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Now go hug a tree and tell your plants you love them, because here we go. The Rig takes place on an oil drilling platform in the North Sea and stars Sir Friendzone himself, Ian Glenn. The crew is expected to go home when a dense fog prevents them from leaving. The fog is just the first of a bunch of unexplained environmental issues that arise, and the crew soon learns that their drilling may have unleashed more than they bargained for. While some of the wokeness and anti-big business sentiments may be a bit heavy-handed at times, the overall mystery and the messages are very good. At six episodes, the rig is totally bingeable, and I would definitely expect there to be a season two. I'm definitely giving the rig the middleman seal of approval. Okay, with the spoiler-free review out of the way, I'm going to explain what I think happened at the end and give my predictions for what I think is going to happen in season two of the rig. Let's go. The rig takes place on one of many oil drilling platforms owned by the mysterious evil organization Kinlock. The crew is getting ready to go home from their long shift at sea when a fog rolls in that is so dense it cuts off all of their communications. Along with fog, there are also earthquakes, and it starts dropping ash from the sky. After one of the workers, Baz, starts healing miraculously from a fall from the tower, and another worker dies, the geologist on board Rose starts testing the ash. Rose discovers that the ash carries spores that are using the humans as hosts. Rose and the crew eventually learn that the spores are coming from vents on the ocean floor and could be what originally caused life to emerge on Earth, as well as been responsible for all mass extinction events on the planet. Sounds a lot like all of my relationships. We find out that the spores show up when the planet needs to be cleansed, and because humans drill for oil, drive cars, use hairspray, and do other things to destroy the environment, they've resurfaced again to cleanse the planet, which may mean wiping out most humans. Early on, we see one of the crew members reading a book called The Kraken Wakes, an apocalyptic sci-fi novel by John Wyndham. The book is about an alien invasion that starts so slowly that most people don't realize it's happening until it's too late. The aliens start by landing in the ocean to avoid detection, and it is assumed they are happy living in the deep water because they come from a gas giant planet with extreme pressure. So a few humans want to try to live peacefully with the aliens in the ocean and the humans on land. But most humans feel threatened by the aliens being there, and they start a war. I won't give away the whole book, but it definitely lines up nicely with what we see in the show. The spores, speaking through Baz, tell the humans that they've been trying to warn them for years that they've been hurting the planet, but just like my kids, the humans just wouldn't listen. If the humans had only listened, then they could have lived together on the planet in harmony. But since companies like Kinlock and company men like Coke are only interested in making money and would rather start a war, the spores are forced to send a giant wave to wipe out the humans on land. The arrowhead we see Magnus playing with throughout the season really has two meanings. One, of course, it was the gift for his son that he never got to give him because his son died, but the other is that it is from a time when humans lived in harmony with the planet. It isn't until modern times that we started hurting the planet, which to the ancient spores is an act of war. Magnus, Fulmer, and Rose try their best to work with Baz to communicate with the ancient life and to let it know they do not want to hurt it, but it's too late. The ancestors already triggered a tsunami that is going to wipe out all the oil platforms and all the humans on land that it deems responsible for harming the planet. They make it to the escape choppers just in time to escape the wave, while Baz chooses to stay behind as a sacrifice, a last-ditch effort to keep the ancestors from doing any future damage. Baz believed that if the ancestors saw that the crew was willing to sacrifice themselves, then that he may be able to avoid extinction. The season ends with Coke telling the surviving crew that the helicopters are not headed towards home because home is going to be destroyed by the wave and everyone is going to be infected by the spores. 
the ending leaves a lot open for a season two. Baz is absorbed into the light of the spores, and we never actually see his dead body, so I could definitely see him coming back on the side of the spores. The crew, along with the infected Fulmer, are heading somewhere that I assume the company set up as a contingency if Coke couldn't kill the spores. Fulmer will be key in figuring out how to stop the spores or how to live with them, since he'll be able to sense what they want and communicate with Baz. It's also possible that Rose and Magnus are infected, along with Kat's baby, since they all came in contact with the spores. Season 2 could show a war between the humans and the ancient spores, with the infected humans trying to get everyone to just get along. What I like best about the rig is that it has somewhat complicated characters and it's easy to see both sides of the argument. Yes, we want to live in harmony with the planet and protect it, but we also want to preserve our way of life. The spores represent Earth fighting back against what the humans are doing to it, but as a human, I have a hard time figuring out which side I want to be on. I really hope we get a season two of the show, as there aren't too many good sci-fi shows out there right now, but I'll believe it when I see it announced. As always, I'd love to hear your theories and what you thought about the show in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Here are a couple other videos to watch while you wait for the next one. Thanks again for watching, I'm Brent the Middleman, and I'll see you next time.